Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to talk about the polynomial features and the custom transformations. So this is the last video uh, which will cover topics from sklearn.preprocessing. We have covered all the other topics in the previous videos. So let us begin. So the agenda for this video is uh, we'll see the prerequisites. Then we'll see what polynomial features is a basic introduction. Then we'll see about spline transformer and its advantages. Uh, then we'll see custom transformers, uh, official documentation and the sample code. So let's begin. So the prerequisites for this are Python, uh, NumPy, Pandas and interpolation. So uh, basically knowing statistics and uh, some mathematical methods and everything. So interpolation, especially uh, polynomial and spline will help you with this. And uh, let's see the introduction for polynomial features. So creating polynomial features is a simple and common way of feature engineering. So it is used to add complexity to numeric input data. So what it does is it combines different features by either multiplying them, combines different numeric features by multiplying them maybe or taking the square and so on. So it is often created to portray the existence of non-linear relationship of features and the target. So for example, let's say if your uh, target numeric value may not be directly dependent on a single feature, it can be dependent on let's say multiplication of two features or square of one feature multiplied by the other feature. So something like that. So for this reason, we uh, create polynomial features and before we train the model, we uh, do this as per our requirement and it, uh, like I said, it portrays the existence of non-linear relationship of the features and the target. Okay, so before we move to spline transformer, uh, we'll see an example of polynomial features. So in the first one, if you see, uh, we are taking x1 comma x2, that means uh, for degree two. So for degree two, uh, when you have two values, that is x1 and x2, then uh, by using the polynomial feature, you convert it into uh, six different values, naming one x1, x2, x1 square, x1 into x2 and x2 square. So you just have to change x1 and x2 into this and that will be your polynomial feature. So for example, uh, if we have 0 and 1 in the first row, then this will be changed to 1 comma or x. So this is x1 and this is x2. So x1 is 0, x2 is 1, x1 square, 0 square will be 0 x1 into x2 0 into 1 will again be 0 and x2 square 1 square is 1 similarly for the second row we will have first 1 then x1 which is 2 in this case then x2 then x1 square which is 2 square 4 x1 into x2 that which will be 6 and then x2 square so similarly for the third row it will be 1 then 4 5 then we have the square, then we have multiplication and the square of the last one. So this is a example with degree two. Now when the degree is three, that means let's say if you have three features. So at that point of time, you have to change them into this. You can see it's one x1, x2, x3, x1, x2, x1, x3, x2, x3 and x1 into x2 into x3. So this is how you will change it. Uh, let us see an example. So if you have the first row as 0, 1 and 2, then you will change it to 1, uh, x1 is 1 over here, 0, 1 and 2. So x1, x2, so this is our x1, this is our x2 and this is our x3. So x1, x2, 0 into 1 will be 0 x1 x3 0 into 2 will again be 0 and x2 x3 which is 1 into 2 which will be 2 now finally uh, multiplication of all three which will be 0 in this case now uh, for the second row again we start with 1 then there is x1 this x2 this x3 
this x1 into x2 which in this case will be 3 into 4 12 and this x1 x3 which will be 15 this x2 x3 which will be 20 and then multiplication of all three which in this case will be 60. Now similarly for the third row you can calculate. Now for this uh, you can say the degree is 3. You can see the term x1 x2 x3. So the degree is 3 over here or you can say there are three features so the degree is 3. Now this is uh, what polynomial feature does. So scalar dot preprocessing allows us to directly transform you know uh, columns uh, and you know the data set basically into this kind of thing. So let us go back to our presentation. Yes, so spline transformer. Another way to add uh, non-linear terms is to generate spline basis function for each feature with the spline transformer. So this is, uh, you can call it an alternative to polynomial uh, transformer. And this is actually uh, advantages and has certain advantages which we'll see in the next slide. So the spline transformer implements a B spline basis. If you do not know what that means, uh, you will probably have to get into the details and you'll have to research it. So splines are basically piecewise polynomials, uh, which are parameterized by the polynomial degree and the position of the nodes. So, uh, it's okay if you're confused over here, we'll also see an example or how to implement it in the code. Now, first let us see the advantages. So, these splines are very flexible and robust for a fixed low degree, which is usually taken as 3. And they provide good options for extrapolation beyond the range of fitted values. So, B spline also generate a feature matrix with a banded structure. So, the matrix will have good numerical properties. So moving on, custom transformers. So custom transformers are used to convert an existing function into a transformer. For example, log 1p, where you do log 1 plus the number and uh, to the base e, of course. So if you have an existing function and you want to use that to transform, now it can be exponential or you know just multiply by something or anything. So to convert this existing function, uh, you can use a custom transformer. So this helps in data cleaning or processing. And this class can be useful if we are working with pipeline in sklearn. So uh, one other, you know, you can say alternative for this is uh, using lambda function. So this can easily be replaced by using a lambda function on the feature. So that's there and uh, we'll see the documentation okay so this is the official documentation and we just see generating polynomial features so we already saw what it is and we also saw on the whiteboard the same example and if you see uh, it has been done exactly the same so this is the code uh, which we'll again try it out by ourselves and you can also read about spline transformer so which is another way to add non-linear terms and there are some advantages uh, which we saw in short and then we have custom transformers so over here again they have used a uh, log 1p we'll see that in our coding example as well so yes that is from the official documentation now we'll take a look at the sample code We'll continue in the same uh, collab file which we have been using in the previous videos and I just write the text here polynomial features and then we'll begin with the code. So import numpy as mp and from sklearn.preprocessing we'll import polynomial features. So let us take a variable x where we'll arrange, let's say, uh, values from 0 to 5. Uh, that is the first 6 real numbers. So np dot arrange 6 and dot reshape. So we'll reshape it as 3, 2 
which means it will have two columns and three rows now we'll just print and check correct so we have 0 to 5 as we arranged it and now we'll take a variable let's say p so p equals to polynomial features and we have to put the degree over here so the degree is 2 for this since we have just taken two columns and now p dot fit underscore transform x so like you can see uh, over here it starts with 1 then we have x1 then we have x2 then we have x1 square 0 square is 0 then x1 into x2 and x2 square similarly over here we have x1 square which is 2 square then 2 into 3 and 3 square over here again 4 square 4 into 5 and 5 square so we also saw this on the whiteboard and it is pretty simple and easy to understand so now we'll uh, we'll see the same example but uh, with 3 degrees so I'll just copy this code since most of it is the same. We do not have to import it again. So let's say this time we'll take 9 and we'll reshape it into 3 comma 3 since we are trying with a degree of 3. So this time however uh, we can write degree equals to 3 and interaction only equals to true. So now, yes. So again over here, if you see, uh, we also saw on the whiteboard, it starts with 1, then we have x1, x2, x3, then is x1 into x2, x1 into x3, x2 into x3, and x1 into x2 into x3. So the first three are uh, basically 1, x1, and x2. First four, I mean, 1, x1, x2, and x3. Then over here it's 3 into 4, 12, 3 into 5, 15, 4 into 5, 20, and then multiplication of all three numbers. Similarly for the third row, so multiplication of all three numbers, 6 into 7 into 8 is 336 over here. So that this is for degree 3. I'll just uh, write it in comments. And now uh, we can see this blind transformer. from sklearn.preprocessing import there it is spline transformer so for this uh, we can just take x equals to np dot arrange 5 dot reshape 5 comma 1 so it will just be in one column and five different rows. Let's check it. All right. Now let's say spline equals to spline transformer degree equals to two and number of knots let's say equals to three. So now we'll print okay we also have to fit it first fit and transform spline dot fit underscore transform x so there we go so what spline transformer has done is it has taken the basis and then it has transformed 0 into these, again 1 into these, and so on for each and every row. So now uh, we are left with just one thing which is custom transformers. So let us see that. Custom transformers from sklearn.preprocessing import function transformer now okay, let's say x equals to np dot arrange 
let's take 9 and we'll reshape it to 3 comma 3 transformer equals to function transformer np dot so we can try it with uh, the log 1p uh, function which already exists where you take a uh, log of 1 plus the number to the base e and then you put out its value so validate equals to true now we'll see transformer dot fit underscore transform x okay so we have just taken the variable t over here that's why t dot fit transform so now you can see uh, first we have 0 uh, which is nothing but ln 1 so like I said log 1 p is the function where you take the log value to the base e of the number plus 1 so our array had 0 over here you add 1 to it which is 1 and log 1 ln 1 is 0 now this will be ln 2 this will be ln 3 so these are the values uh, of log to the base e this will be ln 4 again ln 5 so we're just taking this number adding 1 to it and finding out the log to the base e now uh, like I mentioned uh, in the presentation so there is an alternative to this now how we can use the already existing functions as the transformers so we can do that uh, using lambda function and uh, let's see so for this we require pandas to make a data frame now let's say x equals to pd dot data frame so we have already taken okay so let's just take x over here since we have already declared x over here uh, and we want to use the same uh, matrix so i'll just write x over here instead of or i can just use this again so it won't be confusing right now x dot apply so lambda x and we are using the function np dot log 1 p of x so if you write y over here you just write y over here this is do not get confused with this x and the capital x we have used capital x for the data set over here and just to avoid confusion i just use y over here now let us see so if you compare this output with this you will see it is exactly the same only we have taken this as a data frame so this looks more presentable and even in real life when we are working with data sets and if you want to use the transformers uh, you will be using them on the data set so this is a more relatable example actually and the earlier examples are just to try out the functions so now if we see uh, it's giving the same result so like I mentioned the PPT, this is an alternative to this and yes, so I think that's it. Yes, so that's it from this video and from the sklearn.preprocessing module. So thank you so much for watching.